imagine you're sitting at theater and you get greeted with a preview for a movie you have no idea about. You sit there intrigued and wondering what all those shots mean. Then boom, you see the title of the movie and you instantly put on your calendar because that looks like a movie worth checking out. That's what a powerful effective trailer does and what it should do. And I'm totally to the poly by a few weeks, but the trailer for Alien Romulus came out and the trailer was just enthralled with an atmospheric setting and sound design that would attract anyone. Lighting and sound that makes you feel like you're in the spaceship with those xenomorphs in outer space. It definitely made me want to get a ticket to watch in theaters. But that got me thinking. What makes a trailer good? And what makes a trailer bad? To answer this question, we're going to look at three different types of trailers. Trailers and teasers that do their job and are effective, trailers that mismarket the movie, and trailers that just give away the whole movie or reveal too much. Let's start off with the Terminator 2 Judgment Day and the Back to the Future teaser trailer. How far are you going? About 30 years. Both teasers start with following a main focus, whether it's a machine or a person walking. And we see what's involved in the movie, whether it's the DeLorean or the machines that are making the Terminators. We see our characters too, like Molly and the T-800 at the end. These are effective teasers because they don't have to show any footage from the film to get you intrigued and get you to wanting to watch the movie. What they want out of you is to be teased. You get to look at the main character and what vibes the movie brings, whether it's a sci-fi thriller or a sci-fi comedy, etc, etc. But you may ask, what about some more modern teasers? Well, for example, Pixar used to do a good job at making teasers for their films released during the golden era. For example, the teaser of Wally starts with the director narrating how they eventually got the idea to make Wally. Then we turn to Wally doing his duty, just as everyday thing. He happens to be the main character in the movie, who we see, full of wonder, gazing up at the stars, perfectly displaying the setting of the film, and where he might end up. Now notice how they don't have any footage from the film. Yeah, this scene, this is not in the film. This is an animation they made just for the teaser. And yet you're enthralled by the idea of a little robot doing his everyday job and thing. So you go to watch at the cinemas to see what it's about. Another teaser that does a good job with marketing the movie, but without revealing what's going on, is the first teaser to the 2008 Cloverfield movie. It's shaking everywhere, man. It's like tremors. Looks like you should have left town a little bit earlier. <laughs> Directed by Matt Reeves, who is now known for directing the Batman. Anyone that has ever seen this movie knows a big monster destroys the city and a couple of friends in the middle of New York just try to figure out what's going on. But when the when, but when the teaser hit theaters, back in theaters, no one knew what the movie was about. It didn't have a title attached to it. It was a big mystery. Was it another King Kong movie? Or was another Godzilla? Who knew? It kept you thinking about it, which made it effective, and they got your butts in the theaters. But let's look at some teasers that mismarket the movie. And this is not me saying they're bad cheat trailers, except for one. And we'll get to that later. But these teasers slash trailers mismarket the movie and mislead the general audience. The general audience watches the trailer, expects one thing, then they go to the movie and they get something else, which make which keeps them not pleased, unpleased. For example, let's look at the movie The Place Beyond the Pines. Romina here. Who's that guy? 
is your using your skill set. Your... When you look at the trailer, you think, okay, maybe this is a heist movie coming from a dad whose only way to provide for his family is crime. But no, the movie isn't about that at all. If you watch the movie, you'll find out that the movie is actually about fatherhood, boyhood, and how hard it is to escape cycles of violence. It's a riveting film that you should definitely check out. But, but let me get to my bad trailer. That isn't only a bad trailer, but mismarkets the movie by a long shot. And that movie is Kangaroo Jack. Thief. And he's not giving it back. Hey, look how tall he is. Uh, uh, the teaser for Kangaroo Jack is a special case, you see, because this movie... This isn't real. The movie itself isn't real. And if you probably saw the movie when you were a kid, I'm sorry to break it to you, but you were probably watching Mama Duke. But don't you miss it when Hollywood would crank animal-led movies? Anyways, Kangaroo Jack trailer has two guys running after a kangaroo. So funny, right? You think the movie's gonna be about the kangaroo being chased by the two guys to see what silly antics they get into it. But then before the trailer ends, you get this. Love the jacket, Charlie. Nice. I said a hip hop. The hippie, the hippie to the hip hip hop. You don't stop the rock. Dude. Oh, okay. So you think the movie's about the talking kangaroo. We're wrong. The movie lies to you. The kangaroo doesn't talk at all throughout the whole movie, and he's barely in the movie. So you can imagine being a kid thinking this is a silly kangaroo movie, only to find out that the movie is only about two criminals trafficking money with unfunny stereotype jokes and scene style look horrendous, with seeing Kangaroo Jack every 40 minutes for only 10 seconds. And the kangaroo doesn't even rap. It's only a dream and he only raps for 15 seconds. But okay. Okay, I digress, because I'm losing my cool. One last trailer that mismarkets the movie is Matt Damon's Downsizing. Ready. Wow, that is wild, isn't it? It's just wild. When you watch the trailer, you expect a wacky art comedy about people who want to become small and see what crazy antics they get into. But when you see the actual movie, you're greeted with a really shallow direction, like directionless, bleak, miserable movie that has nothing to prove or show. The trailer was more enjoyable to watch than the movie and that's saying something it's not supposed to be the case but okay let's move on and talk about the most frustrating kind of trailers the trailers that just spoil the whole movie and this is really frustrating because it feels like the trailers these type of trailers are the most prevalent in Hollywood. Every time I sit down at the movie theaters, I'm greeted with a trailer of a movie that looks remarkably interesting. And then the trailer keeps going and going and showing and showing and more scenes and by the time the trailer ends, you feel like you've watched the whole movie. Because you feel like you were shown all the cool scenes, all the funny scenes, all the jump scares. So by the time the trailer ends, you don't even want to watch anymore. And most of the time, that's sometimes the case. A lot of the time, they'll actually put all the best scenes in the trailer. So that just makes the, uh, the general audience not want to watch the movie. So you lose audience members for your movie. And you lose tickets. And it's especially frustrating when you get shots of the third act in the trailer. Or the second trailer, because you feel that you can pretty much put the pieces together and figure out what the movie is going to be about and how it's going to end. For example, Castaway starring Tom Hanks has his character trapped in an island, which the movie hinders on whether or not he's going to make it out, right? So you go see the movie to see, oh, is Tom Hanks going to make it out alive? But no, you don't even have to watch the movie. You can just watch the trailer. It shows him getting off the island. For years, we had a funeral, a coffin. What was in it? <laughs> Are you serious? It's still an amazing movie and I recommend to watch it at least once in your life. But if you had seen this trailer back in 2000, you would have already known he makes it off the island. And it kind of steers you away from even watching the movie. 
Another trailer that reveals too much of its plot points is Shutter Island. I'll give you a briefing about the institution. All I know is it's a mental hospital. But the criminally insane. We take only the most dangerous, damaged patients. One's no other. If you've seen the movie, you know what the big plot twist is. Spoiler alert, nothing's real. Now, the trailer heavily relies on certain lines and scenes to practically spell it out for the general audience, but if you watch the trailer, you can pretty much guess who si Patient 67 is. When you watch the movie, you're, mu you're made aware of that and confirmed it. So it's not as big of a surprise as it should be. For the last trailer we got, we got the goddamn Amazing Spider-Man 2 trailer. Everything. Now this movie has been talked to death and literally nothing new can be said about this movie aside from people liking it after No Way Home all of a sudden. But I'm not here to talk about the movie, I'm here to talk about the trailer by itself. When the trailer came out in 2013, we see the scene of Gwen Stacy hanging from a thread and followed by a scene of Peter Parker crying. If you've ever picked up a comic book or just know Spider-Man, you know Gwen Stacy's most likely dead. What else would make Peter Parker cry? It's a canon event that Gwen Stacy dies in every universe by the hands of the Green Goblin, whether if it's the comics, movies, or shows. But I'm getting off topic. This trailer just revealed way too much, gave us too many scenes that aren't even in the movie, and showed us the last shot of the damn movie. The trailer is a disaster of an excuse for a trailer of any sort. Now, to answer the question of what makes a trailer good. Okay, well, what builds a movie, you may ask? Is it the shots? Is it the action? No. None of that, actually. Not even the lighting. What comes first when you make the movie? It's the script. It's the dialogue. Well, how do you know what dialogue you should add to the trailer? Exposition and action. Tell the viewer who's watching the trailer the surface of what's going on in the movie. Have the characters explain something. For example, we have to defuse the bomb. For the action, show the characters either trying to defuse the bomb or have them trying to escape where they're at. A trailer should also be accompanied by its music. Why should it have music? Why should it not? Or what would go well with the vibe or theme of the movie? These are all questions to ask yourself when making a trailer and the things that could help trailers out become better. I definitely don't think this is everything that comes into question when making a trailer, but I definitely think it's things that should take be taken taken into a large account. But anyways, thank you for watching or listening. These are just my opinions on trailers, what makes them bad and what can make them good, and how someone can improve on making a trailer if they're thinking of making one. Consider subbing. It would really be appreciated. But until then, catch all on the flip side.